it's Ed. Welcome to another episode of Lessons from My Mentors. This one, I just call my pastor. So I had so many pastors early in my life, and what I'm about to share can be a subscribe to many of them. So I'll just call my pastors, and it's really the power of the village or the small group. And we talk a lot about this if you read our book I did with Chris Roscoff, Diagnosed, you'll, see, you'll learn that one of the keys, and this is through research and also through tons of focus groups, one of the keys to a great experience for patients is the village. And it shouldn't be reserved for a time when you're in a crisis, although that's often when the village first comes to play. So in the book, we talk about creating your village or you need a village because it's so beneficial in so many different ways which is what I'm going to talk about and try to bring some clarity in terms of what that village means or what that small group means and so for us so let's take the context like to current day so there was a time a few years ago so let's say four years ago where Simmer and I realized wow we had a lot of friends which is good and a family but do we have like uh, just a handful of go-to people? For us, it was as a couple. So for you, maybe you as an individual, it could be you as a couple, whatever it is for you. But I think you understand, and the main point here is the principle. So for us, it was couples. And we decided that we needed to be surrounded by five like-minded couples. So we wanted a diverse group of couples that would be our village, that would be the type of people that would fight for you say they would always lift you up and believe the best in you and carry you when you need to be carried and celebrate when you needed to celebrate and cry and you know and then practical level just help you when you need it and so we went through this process of going through all of our friends or maybe people who were sort of tangential it's like who are the five couples that we wanted to spend life with and so we identified them and we said what we're trying to do and we probably asked seven couples and based on responses and commitment levels, stuff like that, we ended up with the five. And we call it the Texas 10. Because we, and we're not all in Texas, but sort of were. So it's a Texas 10, it's five couples in total. So four couples in addition to Simran and I. But then we added another couple. That's where you get the five couples, not to be confused. There's no magical num magic number. You do what you're most comfortable with. Uh, for us, it was five. And we made a commitment to one another. So they knew what they were getting involved with. So we had a meeting. And we made a commitment. We made a covenant relationship with one another. Meaning, it was like, obviously, we didn't sign anything. But pretty much signed it spiritually, you know, emotionally and, and so forth. So we then just started life with them. And we started meeting on a regular basis. So that's key. For Village is meeting on a regular basis. So when we were in church, where we first learned this, you know, we had small groups, so we were meeting every week. So in addition to church on Sundays, we had small groups in the middle of the week, typically Tuesday night, maybe Wednesday night, and we would break bread together. So what, whatever it is for your village, I'm just giving you one example, but we would break bread together, meaning we would eat together, we would share a meal together. Uh, with the Texas 10, especially during COVID, we would share drinks together and we, we met weekly virtually. And then we had like deep questions to get to know one another. So it was more than a superficial relationship. And then we'd get together with one another on a routine basis. So especially as COVID was coming down and there was a lot more freedom of movement, those sort of things. But we still met even during COVID uh, in person. And so it was, you know, celebrations, parties. And then we were there for one another. Like when I went through my surgery, uh, my prostatectomy, they were there, we had, they celebrated beforehand, we had a party, sort of celebration of life type thing. During the process, they were there supporting us practically as well as emotionally. And that's what it's all about. So it's like going through life together and then when to struggle, right? Everyone struggles in their marriage. If they tell you they don't, they're either don't have a good relationship or struggling for, or they're lying. So you got to have people around you that can help you through the struggles, right? And everyone, I, I, I don't know, at least my experience has been, you know, it's kind of like goes up and down and there's times where it's really good and there's times when you're struggling. So especially when you're struggling, it's great to have someone there to, to be with you and to help you through that. 
So that's what the village concept is all about. So that's really a lesson for my mentors. You gotta live life with other people and life givers, not life takers. These are people, again, who are giving, who are gonna help you, who are going to support you in very tangible ways. So I think I've talked enough about that. So how do you do it? So if you're listening, you're saying, hmm. so I challenge you, if you're listening, do you have a village? No, I mean, really, do you know you have a village? Because that's the other thing we uncovered in the book. People think they have a village until something goes wrong. And then people, it's not because people are mean or anything, but some people freak out. You suddenly tell someone, and including family, that you've got cancer or you've got, you know, a year to live, or whatever it might be, or you're struggling in your marriage, or you're struggling at work. People will abandon you. And not be, again, not because they're mean spirited, it's because they're freaked out and they don't know what to do. So if you have the village ahead of time, that's the key is to do this ahead of time. So if you're listening and you're saying, and, and again, the challenge is ask yourself and write it down. Do I have, you know, if it's for uh, couples, do I have four or five couples in my village? And do they know they're in their village? That's a test. Do you think you have a village? Do the people in your village know they're your village? That, that'll be the your litmus test. Or let's say you're single or you're just looking for like five other women or five other men or what, whatever the combination might be. Everyone's gonna be different. Write it down and see if you have it. So if you don't, which 95% of people do not, and it's fine, uh, it's it's simple. So, so think about, so whatever your target is, I'm gonna use couples. List all the couples that you would want in your village. And you know, obviously work on this with your partner so you have agreement. And then go ask them. And, but be really careful when you ask them in terms of listening to their answer. We had one couple that would have been a natural couple. Like if you would have asked us, who's in your village? We would have said them. But when we went through this process, we realized, no, they're really not in our village. They really aren't. They're more seasonal type people. And we could just tell that they weren't gonna be committed for the long term. So you gotta make hard choices and then have those conversations with people so they really understand. And I'm telling you, some of you might listen and say, oh, well, that's too formal. I'm telling you, there's gonna come a time in your life where you're gonna need a village. And you gotta make sure you have one. And if you're one of those people that says, well, that's too formal, I hope it works out, and for sure. But I'm telling you, our experience has shown that most people don't have a village. They think they do, but they don't. So go through the formal process, write down who's in your village. If you don't have a village, if you're writing this down, you realize, mm, I, I don't have that. Go and ask people, and be thoughtful, prayerful, Really think it through and get the right people around you. You need to be, life is hard, it's not easy. You need to surround yourself with people who are for you, who are gonna help you no matter what happens. So that's what this lesson is all about, is creating that village, like-minded people that are there to hold you up. All right, thanks for watching Lessons from My Mentors.